Caddis Maximus here. This time I'm just doing a quick review of the Harbor Freight 12 volt rechargeable uh, cheap little flashlight automotive uh, that you just stick into a cigarette lighter outlet or what they're known as power outlets. They look like these. Uh, on a safety note, don't ever stick your finger in a light socket and don't stick your fingers into uh, cigarette lighter sockets either. Safety first as always. This is the part number 64109. They advertise this as a 60, or excuse me, an 80 lumen. Uh, normal shelf price is $399, but of course there's various coupon sales, etc. Uh, it's a lightweight little cheap flashlight. Actually, I was going to compare it because I have this little Nebo high beam here. And uh, this is a similar unit, just a bit more compact and a bit more focused of a beam, although not it maybe not quite as bright. This uses uh, COB technology, which is multiple cells on a single board. And what we can see inside there is that we have six little LEDs, one, two, three, four, five around the edge, and then one in the center for a total of six. And contrary to popular belief, the LED elements actually aren't emitting white light. They're emitting blue light. And then the yellow tinge that you always see on these what LED flashlights is a phosphor. And so the blue LED interacts with the phosphor to produce white light, kind of like a fluorescent lamp. The one issue is because it's not one element, uh, it doesn't have quite as much focus. So this is not a, f even though it has a nice re uh, reflector in there, uh, it is more of a floodlight. It really casts a wide beam. If we take a quick look here at just how wide the beam is, you can see it's right next to my hand and light is coming, you know, a lot of lights coming straight off the side. Where if we take the Nebo here, we can see that there's much less light. If, actually, if I compare them both, then you can see the contrast, how much the light, uh, the camera adjusts and how much the Nebo gets washed out. So it is quite a bit brighter than the Nebo, as you can see there. But the Nebo is more focused. Now I'm about, say, a foot away from the surface here. There's the Nebo. And it, this Harbor Freight's maybe a little bit brighter, but we can still see the beam from the Nebo. So that kind of gives you an idea of how much of a floodlight this is. Anyway, let's turn these lights back on, turn these back off. I kind of like the Nebo because it actually has a charge function. So when you have it off, everything's just disconnected. And then you turn it for charging or you turn it to actually use the light. This does not have that cutoff functionality. And so the reason they would have it on the Nebo is the attempt to make the batteries last longer. Batteries, you know, any battery technology, whether it's nickel metal hydride or lithium ion, uh, it turns out all of the, unless it's a lead acid battery, and even those when they're fully charged, you have to reduce them to a low voltage, very low trickle charge. The thing about trickle charge isn't just limiting amperage, it's also having the voltage just barely high enough to actually put power into the battery. Obviously, if your voltage is lower than what the battery is, the battery will try to drive whatever it's connected to, not actually receive energy. But it's just terrible to let any kind of battery just sit there and bake on the charger. Always been a kind of a pet peeve of mine where people are like, oh, I don't always want to have the battery ready to go. Um, especially like lithium ions, which, you know, have very little self-discharge. And they'll just have them sitting in the charger for days at a time. That's actually costing you life of the battery among most battery chemistries besides lead acid. And lead acid will even have issues if you have it set to too high a voltage. Anyway, this is just a cheap little neat light. It's actually reasonably bright if you need to change a spare tire or just have a handy flashlight. What's kind of nice, it's not particularly well built. It's kind of flimsy ABS, but it's actually not bad. For $3.99, it actually has quite a bit of uh, light. I mean, it doesn't last very long, I'm sure, maybe an hour or two. Harbor, I forget what Harbor Freight advertises its lifespan is or how long it lasts, uh, but it certainly isn't super long. And it's a great light to get your kids because it'll be more than bright enough for them. Turn this back off. Uh, for, you know, for any kind of, you know, overnight stays or camping or any of that kind of stuff, it's not bad at all. And then it's so cheap that you don't have to worry about so much if it ends up getting lost or broken. I'll give a quick little demonstration. I do like another feature. So this Nebo, and I'll show it on this, but the Nebo, when you plug it in, it doesn't do anything. And then when you set it to the charge mode, we can see that we get this neat little red light indicating that's charging and it turns off when it's done charging. The Harbor Freight is similar. The 
Actually, I haven't fully charged this up, so I'm not sure if it turns green. That might be not possible. They probably wouldn't do that on this because the green LED would be an additional LED and a little bit more electronics. So this probably just glows red and then just simply turns off when it's done charging. Although it may not, it may just always be glowing red regardless of the charge state of the battery. One thing I couldn't find was what battery chemistry, whether this is a either, it's going to be one or two, nickel metal hydride or lithium ion. And so I kind of wanted to see, that would really indicate, you know, uh, how worthy this little thing is. So let's go ahead and take a look at that here now. It's actually surprisingly easy to pop open. And I was kind of happy about that because if you have any issues, at least you can open it up and resolder a wire. But the front cap actually unthreads. It has a little plastic window, but at least since this unthreads, you can, uh, potentially replace the window if it gets too messed up. We have a little chrome plated piece of plastic for the reflector. Uh, one thing to note when you're reinstalling it, you got to put the reflector in first. Uh, it has these little pegs and they actually fit into these four little holes in the circuit board. I thought that was kind of interesting they did it that way. Then the back side, this does not have a built-in fuse. Usually on these types of anything that plugs into a cigarette lighter will have like a little fuse uh, in this area back here. This just has a spring and we can see that the wire is soldered to it. So if you have issues, that's most likely the first place I'd check. After you unscrew that, there's actually a little plastic ring that holds together the two halves, the clamshell in the back. So you just take a little screwdriver, what I'm doing here, and you just work that off like that. And then we have the two pieces of the clamshell ready to come apart. So we'll go and separate that now. It came apart nicely because one side came off. Funny enough, this has two different terminals, one on each side, and they are actually both metal on this. But oddly enough, actually only one of them is active. This is a little brass piece with a spring. Yet we can see right there that it doesn't contact anything. Only the one on this side is actually providing the charge, which I think is a little bit odd. So what we can see here is a 16340, 250 milliamp hour, 3.7 volt lithium ion battery. There is a part number there, so we can potentially look it up and see you know, what it is, what chemistry it is, if it's lithium ion ferrite polymer, LIFEPO4, or something else, uh, which is actually good to see. So it'll hold a charge for a decent amount of time because it's lithium ion. It should have several hundred charge cycles, but that also tells us it's a battery technology where you just don't always want to have this perpetually charging, especially if it's charged up. So, you know, if you're going on a road trip, plug it in to make sure it's charged up. Otherwise, just keep it in the glove box or something like that. But it is neat to see that lithium ion's gotten cheap enough where they're actually using that instead of a terrible little uh, nickel metal hydride because this is a lot more capacity. Quarter amp at 3.7 volts is about 0.85 watt hours. Or this would drive a one watt bulb for, you know, 55 minutes, 50, 55 minutes, so that's not too bad at all. And of course, there is a quite a bit of electronics in there because of the uh, because that's the charger for the lithium ion battery. And I didn't mention, but the power switch is actually a physical switch, so it's not like a software button. That would be an issue. Soft buttons always have a little bit of electricity going through them to monitor whether the button's being pressed rather than just having a physical button that fit, you know, a button that physically disconnects and reconnects. Um, in that situation, then the power is truly totally cut off. So, which is kind of nice. It'll mean that I'll have less levels of self discharge when it's sitting in storage. So the battery is like a double sided taped into this half of the housing. And I don't really want to pull this off. Those wires are hair thin. They really don't like to be fiddled with. Uh, we can see that they did try to save some money because they, uh, just used the, the posts that aligned circuit board have just been melted. To retain it there's not even little screws but overall for four dollars that's a pretty neat flashlight 10 years ago that this little thing would have been 10 bucks anyway that's the, it for the little harbor freight uh 64109 12 volt rechargeable uh utility flashlight 80 lumens and uh, i thought i'd show you what's inside and give you uh my opinion on it kind of uh, on this flashlight kick lately so anyway i really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing and if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe to the caddis maximus channel until next time caddis maximus out